As the noon deadline passed, the normally bustling Champs-Élysées was almost deserted. The famous shops and pavement cafes of Paris shuttered by orders of the French president. Only essential movement is allowed now, and non-essential activity is being punished with a fine of more than $50. Across France, 100,000 extra police are enforcing a lockdown which extends beyond the streets and into the home of every citizen. Pour vous donner quelques exemples concrets. To give you some examples, a family lunch, dinner with friends, a football game with friends, a game of cards, all of that which might not normally seem important is now forbidden. Not just discouraged, but forbidden. Let's not downplay it. Each one of those meetings is a moment when the virus can be transmitted. The north Italian city of Brescia is in Lombardy, epicentre of Europe's COVID-19 outbreak. The grave concern across Europe stems from the hard lessons being learned here. What is really shocking, something we had not been able to forecast and brought us to our knees, is how quickly the epidemic spreads. Within two weeks, now three weeks since the beginning of the epidemic, we put a total 1,200 patients in Lombardy in intensive care. And so, the freedom of movement enjoyed by Europeans for decades has abruptly ended. This was the traffic jam at the Franco-Swiss border, a four-hour queue affecting even essential workers like this nurse. Our patients are waiting for us. Our colleagues are also waiting for us. These are still human beings. They are in their beds. They are waiting for blood tests. They are waiting for us to feed them. And here we go. We are stuck. The EU's external borders are being shut too, a ban imposed on entry for non-EU citizens for the next 30 days. Relaxing the EU's internal borders, though, is now an imperative. We have a lot of traffic jam of lorries transporting goods. The flow of goods has to be swift. We need these goods for the functioning of the internal market. For the moment, at least, the UK is resisting pressure to lock down its citizens. People have been urged to avoid bars, restaurants and leisure venues and work from home where possible. The government is offering $400 billion of loan guarantees to support affected businesses and the Prime Minister has appealed for national unity. This enemy can be deadly, but it is also beatable. And we know how to beat it and we know that if, as a country, we follow the scientific advice that is now being given, we know that we will beat it. But the prospect of a compulsory lockdown is looming. Italy, with more than 2,000 coronavirus deaths, is the worst affected country outside of China. And with more than 3,000 new infections in Italy every day, the burden on hospital capacity is almost overwhelming. But the rate of infection has slowed slightly in the Lombardy region, epicenter of the country's outbreak. There, at least, there is a faintest glimmer that the quarantine measures are starting to show results.